You're welcome back. You're still watching News Nights, reaching you live from Nigeria's capital in Abuja. I'm Christian Ogodo. And I am Gogwe Alimu. Stakeholders on human rights in Nigeria are asking the Nigerian government, especially uh, security forces, to recommit to the protection of fundamental human rights of all citizens by regarding it as a priority uh, for the nation, especially during the 2023 general elections. At a human rights dialogue by the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja, the stakeholders, which include officials of the United Nations in Nigeria and other rights activists, uh, say the release of the 2022 Multidimensional Poverty Index Survey by the National Bureau of Statistics is a measure of the realities of human rights in Nigeria. They say this highlights the urgent need uh, for collective action to improve the living conditions of poor and vulnerable Nigerians. Minister of Women Affairs Pauline Tallinn also advocates more support for women candidates in the 2023 elections. We often only miss something when we don't have it. And so it's difficult to grasp the everyday significance of dignity, freedom, and justice, human rights, until we find ourselves in their absence. And we need to remind ourselves of this, because for those of us whose dignity is honored, and I guess at least all of us on the high table will be in that position, our freedom is protected, our access to justice is ensured, life that is different from that is difficult to imagine. And yet, none of these social linchpins that some of us enjoy are guaranteed around the world. So we are key and we are in the center of all that will be discussed here today. And I call on all well-meaning Nigerians that as we observe the 16 days activism that will culminate tomorrow on the International Day of the Human Rights, I dare to say that this uh, hyping up of advocacy on all forms of violence against women, girls, and boys should not just end tomorrow. I dare to say that we should have this in mind and fight against all forms of violence against women, children, boys, and girls every day of our lives. Okay, joining us now to discuss Nigeria's uh, commemoration of the Human Rights Day is the Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Anthony Ojuku. Very warm welcome. Thank Anthony you. Ojuku is also a lawyer. Um, yes, some, some, some people would just uh, start by saying, look, we celebrate uh, all these uh, days and the rest without mm. uh, actions. We don't see uh, what the commission is doing. The answers uh, probe and the rest is that the finality has governments really complied with some of the recommendations. Tell us, you know, reassure Nigerians about the significance of this day. Well, uh, of course, this was um, on the 10th of December, 1948, when the whole world gathered at say, Look, we don't want um, a world that people cannot live in dignity. We don't want a world that people cannot live in freedom. We don't want a world where there will be injustice and they uh, adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And that what is life? What is man without dignity? Mm. So th that, that is what we are celebrating today. Because from that moment, when the Universal Declaration was adopted in 1948, all organs of society have been enjoined in their various locations to take various steps to make sure that every word of those declarations are respected. And for us here in Nigeria, uh, we join the rest of the world to celebrate our freedoms, our dignity, and uh, the giant strides we are making in the area of human rights. I'm sure the day calls for more than celebration. It actually calls for action and would like to know exactly what systems you're putting in place. Because uh, according to the Human Rights uh, Measurement Initiative based in New Zealand, it, it says on four basic fronts for Nigeria, right to food, right to health, housing and, all, and work. Uh, right to food, Nigeria scores 54%, uh, health 48%, housing 35%, work 32%, below, way below average. So As a matter we should of fact, not even it says, talk about education. Yeah, yeah, it says very bad. Why in 2022 is Nigeria still not... Ranking you low. Know, yeah. 
as far as human rights is concerned? Well, life, um, life is a process. Life is not an event, you know. And uh, you can see, um, of course, UNICEF released figures to suggest that there are about 20 million out-of-school children. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is insecurity, and that affects every aspect of human rights. You can see that uh, people, a lot of people cannot go to farm in certain parts of the country and that's affecting the food security and uh, you can also see uh, we, we are, but we are making progress because oh. right now the situation has improved a lot and uh, at least uh, well, what are you doing right now well to what we are doing situation? right is we have we are creating more awareness people are more aware about their rights now on like what happened in the colonial times or during the military mm -hmm. regime or even at the inception of democracy in 1999. You can see, we can see that um, uh, more people are able to uh, fight for their rights now because they know they can go somewhere to complain, a national human rights institution, a uh, civil society organization, legal aid council, and all these are all MDAs. Like what we are doing today, uh, all the MDAs that have uh, human rights mandates, came together today and met with the UN and tried to have a kind of overview of the human rights situation, identified which areas can we work together next year, how can we uh, collaborate to keep improving the, 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 the situation of human rights in the country. Uh, from the data uh, which was released by the National Bureau of Statistics, it shows that uh, the situation is not wonderful, but uh, we are committed, we continue uh, advocating that uh, there should be increase in, um, in budget for health, mm -hmm. there should be increase in budget for education, there should be increase in budget for housing and shelter and all those things. So, but um, everybody sees the, the world situation since COVID uh, is not the economy all over the world was affected. So um, I think um, Nigeria is trying its best, you know, uh, if we can deal effectively with the issue of corruption, I believe we'll be able to meet uh -huh. most of our national challenges. Okay, I mean, yeah. the challenges are enormous indeed, and um, institutions uh, have to collaborate, just like you said. But I want to ask, is there a national helpline, you know, uh, in situations where um, fundamental rights are abused, we hear of a gender mm -hmm. violence, particularly against women, exactly. against children, and mm -hmm. the rest. And uh, you mentioned the Legal Aid Council, and it's like they've been in the doldrums, and you hardly mm -hmm. hear mm -hmm. much about well, that. Well, you so know, these things, if you don't need help, you don't seek for help. Or if you don't know where it, to seek for help, that's, that's why I asked yeah. for, for instance, we have, we, have, we have a, a toll free number, 6742 which any Nigerian can call and seek assistance. 6742. 6742. Mm. is a toll-free number, you know, which um, I, uh, the commission uh, set up in collaboration with uh, uh, UN's uh, EU Spotlight Initiative and OSIWA. You know, the assistant. And the, the, the um, Nigerian Communications uh, Commission. Commission. Mm -hmm. Nigeria, no, no, no. no, no, it is involved. Okay. Three of us uh, partnered to, to put this in place. And it was, it was unveiled on Friday last week. Oh. Yeah, with the, uh, with the with the resident uh, humanitarian coordinator, we unveiled it at Chelsea Hotel. So it's, it's quite on now. And uh, it is to help uh, victims of SGBV, domestic violence, is a helpline. And we are also partnering with our uh, sub platform. Our sub platform is a platform where uh, you have a pool of service providers. Service providers, we mean people who can help um, people, survivors of SDBV, so yeah. victims of SDBV, because being a hotline, being a, you don't know where the call will come from. So that on some platform enables us, once you call, we now connect you to the nearest service provider that can come and give you assistance. Mm -hmm. For instance, that the, that the, the, the receiving center is in our office in Abuja, but the call can come from call from Cross, Cross River State. Anywhere. So, oh. I mean, so we now yes. have an office in Cross River, and this you can be connected to a service provider, and the services uh, provided 
could be di different. Maybe the person needs counseling. Maybe the person needs medical assistance. Maybe the person needs legal assistance. Maybe the person needs uh, uh, maybe instantaneous uh, intervention. Uh, exactly, you know, or maybe is being attacked retrieval already. and yeah. you know, maybe taken to the shelter yeah, or something I just like took that. The liberty to actually call this helpline, and I'm wondering how helpful. Trying to call does not exist. Please check okay. the number and try again. Now that's <laughs> one of the challenges. How do you address, you know, such? Um, you know problems because I'm looking for help. Yeah, I'm, you know, calling. reaching out for help. I'm calling for help. And but the line is the, not available. The, the line is not available. Well, I I think um, we there's uh, interconnectivity between um, um, uh, most of the uh, telecommunication companies, but mm -hmm. the one we are still having challenge with is uh, uh, I think um, um, Econet, the one that. There used to be a connection. Okay. So uh, maybe that number, I, I can't say exactly the mm. number you have called, but. 6742. It's 6742. Yeah, I mean, it's your toll free I, I, number I, I, that has been called, yeah, it, and you talk mean, about, you know, no, no, no. You, a collaboration. You know, from with the line uh, you are NCC. calling. Right. Okay. You know, from the line you are calling. Mm -hmm. If you are using MTN to call, I'm saying it's, it's, it's smooth. If you are okay. using uh, maybe, maybe I should try the MTN then and see. all that. So, mm. okay. so you know so, why we're doing this? Yeah. It's just so that you can see How the challenges is ahead. Yes, yeah. so that you are able to actually resolve them, resolve them as quickly as, as possible. possible. As a matter of fact, when you said you had a hotline mm. and you called six seven six seven four two, yeah, I was a bit taken aback because I would have expected a one one two, a one one nine, a nine one one. That are easy to remember that you can just you know. Maybe that's something you want to look into, you know, yeah. going forward. Yeah, but you see, the, 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 there's uh, right. there, there a toll-free number. I'm that just calling your toll-free mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. again via MTN. And mm -hmm. did you hear what he says? Uh, let's uh, get it so that uh, at least our viewers uh, can listen again. Please check the number and try, and try again. again. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think we have to report well, this. We just, yeah. we just hope that uh, yeah. uh, Nigerian Communications Commission and uh, other collaborative agencies mm -hmm. are working to perfect this and yeah. Yeah. make it we, as I simple mean, as uh, possible and the rest. I don't know yeah. how many people can easily memorize this. So, um, But that's the shortest. Uh, you see, there are rooms again okay, for improvements. Okay, okay. The uh, challenges are told, enormous. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of our producers is saying it's a short code uh, you know, for messages only and not for calling. So maybe that's the, where the problem is. No, it's for calling. Okay, well, according to her, that's what she's saying. Okay. So what that means is if there's an emergency situation... And the person calls right how now. Do you, how do you even t send a text yeah. in an yeah. emergency yeah, in situation? An emergency situation. You know? <laughs> there there so, is another number which right. I don't have off head, which is okay. a normal uh, uh, GSM num number, okay. which is also toll-free. You know, but why we chose this short code because it's easier to memorize mm. and, and mm. remember, you know, but... No worry, I'm sure the next time you perfect it, I mean, feel free to come back and let us know exactly <laughs> what the situation <laughs> is, yeah. you know, so that uh, our viewers can appreciate that. But, you know, on the issue of this uh, Human Rights Measurement Initiative, um, quoting them again, they're saying that the structures and policies in place are most likely, uh, you know, they actually most likely prevent many people from claiming uh, their rights so it's one thing to you know uh, have your right violated it's another thing for the system to actually help you seek uh, redress and get justice when your rights are violated well i mean um all we do in life is to keep improving the system mm. uh, i mean i mean there are challenges obviously right. i mean with law enforcement, uh, we, mm -hmm. we inherited a law enforcement um, a mechanism that was servicing the colonial regime, right. which was protecting the regime and not the people. The same was passed over to the military. The law enforcement in the military was to protect the regime, not to protect the citizens. Mm -hmm. Now we're in democracy, where the citizens are the actual owners of the power. Absolutely. Now, that transition from uh, protecting uh, regime protection to citizen centered uh, law enforcement is what we are still battling in our society. Are you engaging with the security? Of course, we do. Okay. We do engage with them. We are training them and right. we are trying to um, help them to muzzle the political will 
to understand that the citizen is at the center of uh, law enforcement now. Absolutely. Okay, maybe uh, this would be the last question. Mm -hmm. What's the level of compliance of, uh, in rights violations, mm -hmm. whether uh, from the courts, you know, to government agencies and the rest? Would you say it's encouraging? Does in it terms give of getting hope? justice? Yeah, in getting justice, does it give hope for a better tomorrow? I mean, the courts are overwhelmed because mm -hmm. if you go to an average cost list in a day, maybe you get 30 cases and how can any judge cope? So there is delay in trial. There are a lot of awaiting trial inmates. You get to the prisons, they are congested, you know. However, I mean, um, the, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of practice directions which... They don't seem to be accelerating the uh, justice uh, system, delivery of uh, justice. Yeah, there are a lot of challenges. For instance, most judges are still writing long hands, and there's <laughs> a limit to, to how many judges you can write in a day. So it wow. is also, we do also need to improve the infrastructure. Right. Because if you, for instance, computerize the system, mm -hmm. people will be able to do research faster, write judgments faster, and uh, you go to some courts, there's no light, and uh, mm. <laughs> you keep sitting till one o'clock, and <laughs> there's no light in the, in the, and even the lawyers and the judges, everybody will be fanning himself. How productive can you be? We'll in that have kind to live it there. Thank you so much. Uh, Tony Ojuku is uh, the head of the Human Rights. The Executive uh, Secretary. Executive Secretary. Nigeria Human, Nigeria Rights, Human Rights Commission. Commission. Thank you. Thank I'll, you so check, much for I'll check the short code Please issue do. and uh, make sure it's resolved as we All right. Well, don't and feel that we'll put us. you on the spot. We just <laughs> wanted to know, you know, the functionality. The efficiency. Yeah. The efficiency it's, it's of this number. It's very important that it works because yeah. if it doesn't work, it's it doesn't defeated. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Exactly.